Let's take a look at how to do some basic sketches in Inventor 2014, since we'll be creating many of our 3D features simply from a basic sketch. In order to do so, once you have a part open, if you don't have one open yet, you can go ahead and select this new icon here and create a new part. I'll go ahead and close this for now. You can also use your application menu too and then browse to new as well. Since I already have one open, I'm going to go ahead and just not create another new one. Okay, so over here in the left hand side, we have create a 2D sketch. If you needed to, you could create a 3D sketch, but we're not going to cover that in this episode. So we'll go ahead and select create a 2D sketch. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. Another thing you can do is hit the S key and that will bring you up to a new sketch as well. If you hover over this sketch icon, you can see there's an S after it says 2D sketch and that will be a shortcut key in order for you to access the sketch quickly. On many of these commands, if you hover your mouse over them, it'll give you a quick tool tip and it'll show you the shortcut key. If this is a command or tool you use quite frequently, you may want to memorize the shortcuts in order to increase your speed. But right now we're just looking at simple 2D sketches. So the first thing we need to do is to select a plane to sketch on. So basically if you want to start a drawing, normally you would have to grab a pencil and a sheet of paper. So it's the same kind of idea. I'm going to go ahead and select any one of these planes. We can see in the right hand corner on this view cube that we are currently looking at the front plane. So let's go ahead and create a line. I'll go ahead and select it here. We're going to be using many of the options in this draw panel. So I'll go ahead and select line. You now see the cursor has changed to a crosshair for me to place a line. And I see two boxes, an X and a Y in order to place my coordinate down. On the bottom left hand corner, we also see select start of line, drag off endpoint for tangent arc. So we have actually two options to do here. We can create a line or we can create a tangent arc. For starters, I'm gonna go ahead and left click at one location and continue to left click and it places my line. If we're done with the line command, we can go ahead and hit escape and that'll finish it. Let's start that one more time. I'll activate line. I'll click once, click again. And this time I'll right click and you see we have this context menu here. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And that will finish the command as well. I'll select line again. Let's create it one more time. I'll come across. I'll come down over. And now let's look at how to create the tangent arc. If I come back towards the end of that line and I click and hold, you see I can create an arc with ease. That's a tangent to that line. I'll make it come all the way through and release my left mouse. And then I'm back in the line command as well. I can click around a few more times. So when I'm done, I can right click and I can hit escape and that finishes the command. Now let's go ahead and grab all this geometry that we created and delete it. I can left click from the top left corner and drag all the way down and create a window and then hit the delete key. Now let's look at how to create a circle. If we see here, the line was just only the line command by itself. It also has a shortcut for L. The circle has a shortcut for C, but it also has additional ways to create a circle. We can create a tangent one or we can create a center point. For now, we're just only gonna look at the center point. With the tangent one, you just have to select three edges for it to be tangent to or three locations. I'll go ahead and create it at this origin and pull out and place a distance like so. I can select another point and continue creating circles. Once I'm done, I can hit escape and that takes me out of the circle command. Let's go ahead and look at how to create an arc. Again, we have various methods in order to create an arc. We're just going to look at the three point. I'll go ahead and select it. We can put a point here. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, if you're not sure if you're specifying the middle point or the end point, the bottom left says select end point. Of so I'm going to go ahead and specify the next point. I'll select a point here and now I can drag out and I can specify a point down here or up here. Again, I'm just selecting a point on the arc. It can be more towards the left or more towards the right. I'll indicate a point like so. Let's go ahead and exit out of this by hitting the escape key. Now we can create rectangles various ways as well. This one we'll look at two of the options. Right now we're going to select the two point. You can see the bottom left and the top right corner. I'll go ahead and create a rectangle here. And I'll create a rectangle here. Once I'm done, I can hit escape. So it's very easy to specify two points in order to create your rectangle. Another useful one is this rectangle here. 
which is specifying these three points. It's useful because I can select a point here, select another point, and then I drag out and create a type of width for this rectangle. I can select a point there. So it's easy to create a rectangle at an angle, and you can see it's displaying an angle for me as well. So if I want it at 45 degrees, I can go ahead and find something close to 45, click and drag out and click one more time. I'll go ahead and hit escape. Now we also have other options over here. We can create a slot. I'm gonna go ahead and drag from the right to the left and delete some of these. You can also notice that when I drag from the right to the left is a different option of selecting as I drag from the left towards the right, which I'll cover that in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and pan down a little bit more. I'm gonna select this slot here Notice again, we have various options. I'm gonna create a center to center slot. So I'll go ahead and select one point, select another point, and then I can drag out to create a slot, just like in the image shown. I'll place one just like so. I'll hit escape to exit that out. Now if I drag from the top left to the bottom right and let go, you see I only highlighted these lines here. If I drag from the top right to the bottom left, and release, now I got additional lines here. Also notice that if I drag towards the right, it's red. If I drag towards the left, it's green, and it has a dashed line. Now anything crossing these dashed lines, the crossing window will be selected. When I drag towards the right, the selection window, only entities that are completely enclosed by it will be selected. So going towards the left, anything crossing the lines of the window or is incompletely inside the window will be selected. So let's try one more time. Completely enclosed, I grab it all. Let's try one more time. Currently nothing is enclosed, so I have only that little point there selected. But if I drag opposite direction, it'll grab both the lines and the point as well. So I'll go ahead and grab all these here and I'll hit delete. And I'll pan back down just a little bit. Now let's take a look at this fillet here. If I drop down, I have fillet and chamfer. If I go ahead and select this, I can select one edge, and another edge, and it's gonna round the corner to the specified radius. I can also simply select the corner point itself. I'll go ahead and close this out. Let's look at chamfer. If I select chamfer, pan over just a little bit. Very similar, I can select an edge and an edge, and it's going to narrow that out a bit, not round it. So it's gonna give it a bevel. I can also select a corner point and it does the same thing. And it provides the dimensions that we have here. I'll hit okay, pan over just a bit. We can also create an ellipse. I'll go ahead and specify the center point, the first axis and the second axis as well. So the ellipse takes three points in order to create. I can place points for later when we need to create an additional points of reference when we're creating an object to snap to. I can also create polygons that are inscribed or circumscribed, and I can change the number of sides here. For now, I'll go ahead and pan over just a bit by holding down my middle wall cell. I'll select once, drag out, and I'll create another one here, so you can see. This point is on the edge, but when I use inscribed, the point will be on a corner. Go ahead and hit done. Zoom out a bit and pan over. I'll go ahead and highlight everything and delete it. Now let's take one quick look at the spline. The spline has two different, well, three different options, but we're only gonna cover two. We have control vertex and interpolation. Let's go ahead and use the first one. I'll specify a few points and it's gonna create a line that curves and it's gonna create points in order for you to control the shape of the spline. Once you're done, I can go ahead and hit this check, and then I can manipulate these handles here in order to change the shape of the spline. Now let me choose the next option here, and this will create fit points instead. Each point that I choose will be actually on the spline itself. Once I'm done, I'll hit the checkbox, and now I'm able to manipulate it by using these handles here. If I increase it, it increases its influence on the line because it's going to be tangent just at that spot. So if I change it at a different angle, I can also move the points themselves, just like with this one here. 
move it in more and move it out. So two different methods of creating a spine and adjusting the shape to the exact geometry that you want it to fit.